Welcome to Miami. This is Royal Caribbean's Freedom of the Seas pulling into the Port of Miami, as seen from my balcony at the Doubletree by Hilton Hotel in Biscayne Bay. I found that a perfect hotel to get before a cruise, and I made a video on it, and I put a link in the description below. It's only two miles from the port, and it's about a 10-minute drive. This cruise was departing from Royal Caribbean's main terminal, Terminal A, but check your cruise documents, because I have sailed with Royal Caribbean out of Miami before, and it was a different dock. I think it was G. I stopped real quick to drop my big bag off at the porter. Then I got into the garage, got my parking ticket on the machine, and put it on my dashboard. Parking is $35 a day. Get to the front door, there'll be lines that will have the, uh, your boarding time signs on there. But if there's no line like there wasn't this day, it was five minutes to check in. And the next thing you know, I'm walking up the ramp and getting on the freedom of the seas. Welcome aboard. Once I got aboard, I took a walk through the beautiful promenade and decided to check out the safety video that is on your Royal Caribbean app on your phone and head to my assigned muster station, which is posted on your CPAS documents. If you can't find it on your CPAS documents, it'll be on your CPAS card, but you won't be able to get that until they open the corridors to the rooms when the rooms are ready. I just think it's important to get the safety briefing done and watch the video before I get myself in vacation mode. I don't want to be one of those names they call for people that haven't finished a safety briefing before departure. Once I got the safety briefing done, I decided to take a walk around the ship. Let's start at the gym. They have a lot of services and classes and other programs you can sign up for. Some are free, most cost extra. It's part of the Vitality Spa where you can get massages, facials, Botox, acupuncture, and all sorts of other relaxing treatments. But I think the only thing I'd ever consider getting done there is maybe a massage and maybe a haircut. If a spa treatment is something you do want to schedule, I recommend doing it on a port day when most of the people are off the ship. A lot of times a spa will have specials and there should be a lot of appointments available. Most importantly though, you can save some cash. And the fitness center you see here is on deck 11 and the spa where the treatments are at is on deck 12 right above it like every cruise ship i've been on recently they have some great equipment on the gym and there's a lot of it they have treadmills stair masses ellipticals regular stationary bikes and then spin bikes they have spin classes too but you have to pay extra for those there's lots of weight machines dumbbells free weights kettlebells and so much more I love using the treadmill when on the open seas looking out at the horizon. But if I need to work out and the ship's encountering rough seas, I'll jump on the Stairmaster. Won't fall off as easy on that. They do have hand towels there so you can use while you're working out and also a disinfecting wipe so you can wipe down the machines after you finish working out. Uh, I highly recommend uh, maybe giving them a quick wipe down before you do it too in case the person in front of you forgot. Anyway, it's a great gym, and I hope to do at least 30 minutes a day there. That way I can eat as much as I want. As I continue making my way around the ship, you're going to notice a lot of art and other things showing up in the video. Every cruise ship I go on seems to have a lot of art, either paintings or tile work, mosaics. I think it's really cool, especially on the stairwells. Everywhere you go, you, there's always something beautiful to look at. They've got a really nice solarium pool that also has a bar there. And then they got these really cool hot tubs that go off the sides of the ship. They're amazing. There's no one in the solarium pool at this shop because it's raining out. They just made an announcement that the rooms are ready, so let's go check out the room. Cabin 1706, Freedom of the Seas. This is a studio suite. Pretty sweet. King size bed, sofa bed, nice place to sit. There's a case of water I ordered. Nice coffee machine in the suites. Very nice. A real chair. Oh, bathroom with a tub. First time I've had a tub on a cruise ship. Okay, for electronics, there is a European port. This is just like the Independence of the Seas. 
Same class ship, I guess. And two US style ports, but no USB ports. I was on Freedom of the Seas a few months ago and Independence, another Freedom class ship, and the only USB ports that they have were on the side of the TV. And it could take a while to charge anything up with that. So I always brought this non surge protected USB port, which may not be authorized anymore. Although I haven't seen anything official, and I've got a cruise coming up. Nothing official from Royal Caribbean, but a lot of YouTubers are saying that they made a change, and you can't use this anymore, so you'll just have to use the block. I hope there's something specific coming out soon. This is a connecting room now. Hopefully the noise won't be too bad. Let's check out the balcony. The real reason why I wanted an aft-facing cabin. Never had one before. Oh, it's a nice big balcony. I wonder if some people would call this an obstructed view. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I don't think so. I think it's beautiful. Be sure it will be nice when we're uh, sailing over the ocean. Busy port of Miami on a rainy day. MSC and Carnival, the only other two ships in port right now. I saw them come in this morning. Welcome to the Olive or Twist on Freedom of the Seas. Right next to the Crown Lounge and I believe the Sweet Lounge. It's empty now, but they have uh, parties here at night. It'll be some beautiful views. Check out the Crown Lounge. I love going to the Crown Lounge. Now it is Diamond members and above, and sometimes, depending on how crowded the ship is with Diamond and Diamond above, Diamond members aren't even allowed in here. But I love coming here and getting pastries, and you can get breakfast in here, and I love the coffee machine every morning. It's the Crown Lounge Terrace. Overlooks the sports court. Someone was just out there with a non nice version of the Zamboni, I guess, the uh, electronic squeegee. And the rock climbing wall. It's quite a slide over there. And the flow ride is back there, too. Let's take a look. From the Crown Lounge, you just walk over to the, or from the Diamond Lounge, no, Crown Lounge, which is now Diamond and Above, to the Sweet Lounge. Never been in there before, let's see. Apparently, I still won't get in there. I just have a Junior Suite. I'll have to check on that to make sure. One of these days. Well, Junior Suites just aren't sweet enough for the Sweet Lounge. But everybody can see this beautiful art. Like I mentioned earlier, it's all over the ship. And I especially love those jet airplanes at the other elevator bank. Take a look at deck five. There's the R bar on the left and the promenade cabins. I got one of those on my upcoming trip. There's guest services over there on the right. Look at those views to the top of the ship. I just love it. Beautiful. And between guest services and the R-Bar, you got the Rainbow Bridge. Lights up, it's pretty cool. Don't go to guest services unless you have to. Lines usually get pretty long, but it's still early on this cruise. Lots of shopping on the promenade. You get the ice cream, the cafe promenade. That's where you can get coffee in the morning as well. And also some snacks throughout the day. Your jewelry stores are here. The British pub. Cool car. You also got Sorrento's Pizza, a favor for everybody. The promenade deck on deck five is also where you have the duty free shop, Vintages, one of my favorite places to go. And also the Bull and Bear Brit Pub 
They have a lot of great music that goes on there. There's the stairs down to the casino on deck four. Let's go take a look. They've got all sorts of slot machines there. A lot of the newer ones. And it sure gets busy on sea days. They also have crap tables, a roulette table, and a lot of blackjack and some other games. If you've never been to the casino in Royal Caribbean, go check out the host desk because everybody's automatically signed up for the uh, players program, loyalty program, and you gain points for the amount of time that you play and the amount of money that you play. And some of the points get you some great prizes. Like if you get, I think it's 1,500 points, you'll get a free cruise, probably an interior cabin. And also, if you get 2,500 points, you become a prime member. That means free drinks in the casino. Well, that's pretty cool. I think you get one point for every $5 you spend, but it adds up quick. Schooner Bar is my favorite on the ship, and it's got the piano bar, where they have lots of sing-alongs, and that's where they play a lot of trivia. And then there's Izumi, Japanese Steakhouse. Still haven't tried that yet. I forgot to mention that once we got down to the casino, that is uh, deck four. That's also where the schooner bar is, Azumi, and one of the entrances is the theater. You can also get to the theater from the third deck. Beautiful theater, lots of great seating, and they have lots of great shows. Now these glass ship models are awesome, especially if you tend to get lost like I do on every new ship I get on. This is back on deck five, and there's Sorrento's, and some more stores. This is the beautiful dining room. It's located at the back of the ship, and you enter it from deck three, four, or five. That's big. I'm gonna take a walk back up to the top deck, see if it stopped raining yet. I know I always find a way to put aviation in my videos. Look, there goes the fuel barge. And that is the sewer truck. We must be getting ready to launch. Yeah. It'll be here too. I gotta say, I think Miami's one of the coolest places to have a sail away party. You get to see a lot of ships because the port's so busy. And there's usually a ton of people that love to dance and have a great time. At least it stopped raining. Okay, we're pulling away from the dock. Freedom of the seas. Miami to Cocoa Key to Nassau and back to Miami. Then I'm getting on a flight and going to Anchorage, Alaska to pick up a flight in Seward, Alaska. So stand by for those videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is one of my favorite reasons to sail in and out of Miami. South Beach. Look at those beautiful buildings. There's some great hotels you can stay there too, but they're very pricey. And the Hilton there, I put a video on that. And if you're lucky, you can get it on points. It's a great hotel. Look at the jet skis. I had fun watching them. And if you stay in Miami before you cruise or after your cruise, I highly recommend a trip to South Beach. There's a lot of cool restaurants and great people watching. And you'll see some of the most amazing cars in the world. It really is something. didn't take long to get three miles off the coast so the casino would be open. I wish I was that lucky throughout the entire trip, but that was fun. Hasta la vista, Miami. See you in seven days. I was so happy they had a Playmakers on deck four. Boston was in the playoffs, and despite the score here, they won the NBA championship. Now back up to deck five, they're going to have the Dancing in the Streets. It's awesome. They have a lot of great entertainers, a lot of fantastic music. All of it that you've heard before. And even if you're like me and you don't dance a lot, you'll get out there and the energy will be pumping you up. And you've had a few drinks, you'll get out there. I did. 
you know what they say, dance like nobody's watching. And you're on vacation, who cares? And after dancing, or if you don't dance, you can always go up to the movie theater deck. They got some great movies. Welcome to Royal Caribbean's own perfect day at Coco Key. Or Coco K, as they prefer to call it. I guess because it rhymes. But they can do whatever they want. It's their island. Hey, they're drying off the pickleball court for my $50 pickleball lesson. That was actually a lot of fun. If you take the cruise with kids, they have a lot of stuff for them. Splashaway Bay is fantastic. They also have Adventure Ocean, which my grandson's been to many times. But since I was traveling alone, I didn't go check that area out this time. Sorry. If you need to find a smoking area, they have one on deck 5 on one side of the ship and then one on deck 11 on the other side of the ship. And they also have one in the casino. But you're only supposed to smoke if you're playing. However, I rarely see that enforced. First time, Coco Cay. Okay. I wouldn't normally take the shuttle. But when I got off the ship, it was right there and just about to leave. So why not? Now, I'm not much of a beach person. And that's pretty much what Perfect Day at Coco Cay is. Although they have zip lines, there really wasn't much else I wanted to do. So I wanted to check out the adults only hideaway beach. I heard it was a great party. And it was. Welcome to Royal Caribbean's Coco Key in the Bahamas, Hideaway Beach. This is the adult only portion. You have to pay for it and you get a better price if you pay for it in advance, but we'll see what it looks like. There's the Freedom of the Seas, docked right next to Celebrity's Reflection. They own the island, so it's not like exploring a new culture or anything like I normally like to do. But let's take a walk around and see what's here. Apparently there's a zip line to somewhere on the island. I took the uh, tram as soon as I got off the ship just because it happened to be there. But it's not a long walk. It says five minutes, but it's probably more like 15. There is a tram you can take at the first tram stop too. Just transfer on the trams. Or otherwise you get to walk through the sand like I'm doing and you can't go on those beautiful looking rocks. Looks like lava, but the signs posted to stay off the rocks. Hoppin' don't seem to get a good time to do a, a selfie video, but here I am at Royal Caribbean's Coco Key in the Bahamas, their private island. And you can see in the background there, you got the Royal Caribbean Freedom of the Seas and Celebrities Reflection. There goes a tram I could have taken, but I get my steps in. It's like mangrove and pine. And palm. I finally got to the entrance of Hideaway Beach. There's a big sign with a map of Coco Cay and someone taking my ticket to make sure I paid to get in. Look, the first thing you see when you get there, it's a bar with pool tables. It looks like there was a band getting ready to play. It looked pretty promising. Enjoy 
Well, you can see they have a lot going on here. Champagne showers. That was pretty interesting. And there's also lots of food here. And everybody was having a great time. Something I really appreciated at Hideaway Beach, all the shaded areas. There was lots of places to relax. The beach here was really nice. Very nice to walk on. Soft sand. Royal Caribbean has a very energetic staff here at Hideaway Beach. It reminded me of Virgin Voyages in their private island. They have a great staff too and it really helps the people potty. But you can also sneak away and relax. I found a relaxing place where I can put my feet up. Oops, sorry for the toe shot. The food choices seem to be incredible. There, everywhere you turn around there was food. And drink, of course. There's those expensive cabanas. I bet it'd be great if you had a large family or a large gathering and everybody had something to celebrate together. That'd be awesome. Let's check out the zip line. That costs $109, but it's usually on sale about 20, 30% before the cruise. Stay right there, buddy. <laughs> There's quite a bit at Perfect Day at Coco Cay. There's a lot of free places to go as well, like this restaurant here. That's some great food. And you gotta get your drinks. You have to pay for them unless you have the drink package, of course. And just like on the ship, if you had the drink package or the Wi-Fi package, it works on Perfect Day at Coco Cay. They have some cool things like this sandcastle right here. And this octopus tentacle hanging out at the bathroom. This is Splash Away Bay on land. It's free for everybody. Your kids will love it. Unlike other ports, if you came to shop, I think all you're going to get is t-shirts and sunscreen. At least I didn't see anything on my first trip. I enjoyed that dancing. Pretty cool. Now it's time to get back on the ship. was what they called formal night but they do a lot of cool dancing the whole crew gets involved and so do the customers it's a lot of fun <laughs> after a busy day on land it's nice to get up early and beat the crowds and walk around the ship I feel like I have it to myself it's a great time to take video there's a pilot boat we are pulling into Nassau in the Bahamas I've been in Nassau a few times and it's a nice place to go. I'm going to save that for another video. But I did want to share the beautiful views you get pulling into Nassau Harbor. I love the lighthouse and the ships. And then you look all the way over and there's the Atlantis. All right, who got off the ship today? Make some noise. Who almost missed the boat today? I saw some people running. There's Bolero's, another one of my favorite bars for uh, entertainment. It's great. Sound of Disco's fun. Green headphones means you're listening to one song. Blue, you're listening to another song. Everybody's dancing to a different tune. It's hilarious. Go check out the ice skating shows on Deck 4 in Studio B. Look how beautiful the ship is at night. Wow. I had a great time on the Freedom of the Seas. It was my first time, but I do have another trip coming up on Freedom of the Seas shortly, and it's going to be stopping in San Juan and St. Thomas, as well as Perfect Day at Coco Cay. One thing I like to do on a cruise, if I'm not in a hurry to get off the ship, 
is take a walk down the corridor of people that have already left and check out some of these suites. They're, since they're cleaning, their doors are going to be open. And this is cabin 1650, the Reuben suite. It's huge. I mean, it's, I know it's a mess because they haven't cleaned it yet, but uh, it's got a feeling for the size of it. Maybe one of these days. You never know. Well, I hope you like this video and hit the like and subscribe button. We'll see you next time.